Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a new model and it's been compared to the TRX4. Well, that's not without reason. When it hit the scene four years ago, I think, it, it was unprecedented. You had front and rear locking differentials, two-speed transmission, a scale, pretty body, portal axles, and a bulletproof undercarriage. They're well known for their performance and their flexibility off-road, even if their electronics are a little lacking. So while various models have been compared to the TRX4, I don't think there have been many that have actually uh, stood up to it with regards to that same impressive feature set. The only one that comes to mind was the uh, Cross RC Emo AT4, which itself had portals and locking diffs and uh, high and low speed, and it was also quite solid. The RGT Rescuer, or EX86190, is now the third vehicle I have here that out of the box has Front and rear locking diffs, so they're unlocked right now. Two-speed transmission, pretty body. How's it go off-road? We have yet to find out. So let's take a close look at this thing and see whether or not it's actually worthy of the comparison. Let's do it. At time of making this video, I don't think it's actually even in stock anywhere. The first run they made was sold out. I was sitting on a pre-order for a little while. As soon as I heard about this thing, I jumped on it. I like the idea that we have diff locks here. I mean, check this out. Diffs are unlocked right now, and you've got a fairly easy running set of diffs. They're really loose. On the website, this thing is Toyota branded. It's got a Toyota badge there, and it's there's no Toyota badge on the grille. It just says RGT, and there's no Toyota Bean in a Hat logo here. I suspect this isn't licensed, therefore. This thing came with a plastic cover, and we can peel that off now. I was waiting to do that till we were on camera. Oh, there we go. The packaging was really good, it was all cardboard. This was the only plastic and the uh, tires holding it down. So it came with wipers, one for the rear and two for the front. And it came with a full lighting kit installed. That's in, it's in the rear as well as in the front. Now the hood opens, not very far mind you, but it opens and it's got a little faux engine cover. That's all it's got. It's actually a pretty plain uh, under thing, but hey, the hood opens. And as someone, someone eagle-eyed in a recent comments on, on my last video said, I seem to have a thing for opening hoods and I think he might be right. I, I quite enjoy opening all the little things on these cars. But scale's part of the fun, right? You want suspension of disbelief while you're driving. You want to be playing tiny trucks and having a little adventure. So we've got a, a roof rack, which is ready uh, for accessories. There's a faux light bar but there's also uh, wiring ready to go for the light bar if you, if you install that, which is cool. The mirrors have reflective material on them, which is cool, and, and they swivel as well. The snorkel looks legit for the 70 series Land Cruisers. Uh, that is actually how they look. Bull bar, side steps, um, brush plates, and rear bumper, they're all ABS plastic. The ladder on the back and your fuel cans, also all plastic, and that's fine. Uh, the body itself sits inside the bumper and it's got underneath attachment system which is not dissimilar to your Jeep, your uh, axial system. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I've got a JLU 110 that we're going to review soon. This is the kit, I've just built it up. It has the same underbody retention clips that you got on your SCX6 as well. And that that's not terrible. So I kind of like that because it looks good. You've got no body clips on top. So it's a detailed body all around. There's plastic on the, uh, there's a body air venting, um, door handles, mirrors, the little spotlights, as I said. This weird Toyota badge, that's actually the latch for the, for the hood opening. I could do without that, honestly, I think, but I mean, it doesn't look bad, it just, doesn't look scale, but that's okay because it, it doesn't look bad. Also, I'll note that these tires aren't beadlocked. They are vented front and rear. They're a sticky and solid feeling tire, very pliable, but they're glued, not beadlocked. That's a minor consideration to be aware of, but since they're plastic, you might be planning on changing the wheels anyway, so that's okay. So you pull the four standard body pins out. That is what meets you underneath. This is the front. There we are. So the wiring is actually very tidy. And you can see they've got uh, brake, reverse, and indicators in the rear. Nothing on the side. But, uh, and also these 
These little lights here don't have LEDs in them, but they could. They don't have retention clips either, but they're ready for LEDs, but they're just, they're not populated. Uh, and you've got your headlights as well. And they go into this light box and that plugs in from the machine with this fella here. The vehicle weighs just over three and a half kilograms without the battery. And everything is waterproof except for one thing, the receiver. It lives inside a receiver box, but it's not sealed. It, and it's really not a box, it's more of a cover. The shifting servos are waterproof and you have several servos. You've got uh, one servo on that side for the uh, first and second gear. And these two mini servos here are the, for the front and rear diff lock. And then you've got a metal geared steering servo mounted up front next to the motor and that can that's for your steering and that's uh, waterproof uh, 25 kilo metal gear so your electronics package overall is great but if you're planning on wet running waterproof the receiver the um there's a rubber seal over the bearing covers there it's apparently a uh, sealed bearing throughout throughout which is great you got your standard t connector on the wp 1060 and the other thing I should note is that we've got dual stage single piece coil over springs on the shocks the suspension's nice it's got a reasonable amount of adjustability the body sits at, at a good height it's plastic throughout and of course another nice inclusion is you've got the uh, wheel arches wheel wells so that protects the inside of your vehicle from uh, from mud and water splashing to a pretty decent degree actually Plastic drive shafts uh, with metal on the important parts, and that really rounds out the uh, the chassis. It's a front mounted front mounted motor into a transmission. It's a 17 turn 550 reverse direction motor, which is also similar to what you'll get on the TRX4. And you've got nice stainless steel links throughout. It's a three and pan hard in the front and four link in the rear, and the articulation is actually. Yeah, it's not terrible and and the whole thing's plush it's just it moves nicely they're actually quite acceptable they, they've got as you can see they don't bounce there's nice damping yeah they're good the other thing that's actually kind of fun is you've got rubber mud flaps one of the mud flaps got torn off while I was testing this thing on the rocks it pops back in easily enough they're just held on by a couple of screws So you do get headlights. So there's off, that's the first stage. Then the middle point flashes the fronts and not the rears. And then the front just turns the lights on solid. I wish all light kits did this. I know we've got a lot of light in here, but you got brake lights on right now. Here's reverse and forward. And for both forward and reverse, you notice the brake lights turn off when you're driving. That's great. I wish they all did that. There are light buckets in the bumper, but no lights wired into them. But these can be added. So the spare wheel would sit where the jerrys are, but you don't get a spare wheel. Uh, and, and just the wipers and a couple of jumper pins for the uh, ESC. That's it. I think it was 126 reduction in second and uh, one, roughly 151 in first. And we're on 2S right now. So. Low speed is still not hugely low. That's that's your slowest speed there. I wish all radios did this. Now they're locked and when they're on, they're unlocked. And that's brilliant, brilliant. Even my favorite cheap radio, the GT5, doesn't do that. I wish it did, at least for that button, because then you know what what's going on. On the trail, sometimes you forget whether you're locked in the front or the rear. You work it out eventually, but it's nice to know. So when they're lit up, they're unlocked, and when they're unlit, they're locked. Unlit is first, and lit is second. And there you go. And then your front diff is uh, controlled by channel five, it's the left one, and the rear diff by channel six. The manual's really good, by the way. It gives you all the extra parts and then it, it also gives you an exploded diagram of how everything works together. I'll put a, um, an article on my website on rc-tnt.com and it'll have all the, uh, all the details that I'm not going to go over now, but I will 
just note one thing on video. There's an entire page dedicated to the light control and that's very worth having. Uh, it's nice to know how it all works together and even just how to plug this thing in. It's a um, five wire connector. It's a very well-rounded system. The only criticism I have, remembering this is cheap, but the only criticism I'd have and it's constructive is that the whole thing's waterproof except for your receiver. If that was in a waterproof box, just a slightly different design here, you'd have a wet weather ready machine. As it is, it's not too hard to waterproof receivers, so you know, it's, it's quite nice. I say we get this thing out to the rocks now and we'll see how it performs. Let's get it down to the six problems. Now, before we get down to the crawling course, I will say that the RGT Adventurer is made with trail driving in mind. I think it's pretty evident. Now we're on 2S power here. And it's got plenty of boogie. We locked or unlocked? Ah, I can check my radio. Lights are lit, so we are unlocked. But we can also make sure by picking it up and... Yeah. So the, the diffs are open and we're in second gear. That's plenty of speed, honestly. <laughs> it's quite stable too. Now, even with the diffs open, the tires have a proper amount of uh, rubber on them. Now, we'll pop into first gear here. Now, the diffs are open, remember. And with Without diff lock, well, we've got the equivalent of center diff lock here. That's what my, my full time four drive has. I don't have diff lock in each end, but I've got center diff lock. That gives you 50% to each end of the vehicle, regardless of what you're doing. Uh, which is in itself a way of improving traction. But if you have tires on the ground and you're not all twisted up, such as what I'll do here, I'll get it out of shape. See that? That's, even though you have center diff lock, if a wheel on each end is able to move, then you're not going anywhere. But even on something like this, you pick your line with care, and you'll still be able to get there. Now we've got to come sideways, which is uncomfortable. So diff lock would have avoided the need for that. But even without diff lock, uh, you're able to go a lot of places. So as a trailing machine, I'll turn the headlights on now. So that switch there all the way forward. Now the headlights will be on. Honestly, this is a, this is a trailing machine. And if you're looking for a do-it-all rig, my suspicion is you will find the RGT Rescuer to be a bucket of fun. And again, we are on 2S. The ESC will take 3S, but 2S is where it's at for this machine. Their powder, it says powder alloy for the gearing. And it says it like it's a plus, but it's, a, it's not. It doesn't say what the alloy is, but it's basically cast gears. Um, cast gears are not what you want for strength. What you really want is a steel cut. For that reason, I'd say 2S is the way to go. 3S might overpower it because the motor certainly will have the kick to break things. So I think 2S might be a happy medium. And to be clear, I'm not actually criticizing this machine. Everything's made to a price. And 2S, with this combination of uh, equipment, I think you'll be very, very happy. That's my observation as far as driving this thing goes. It's actually quite fun. I'm enjoying myself even just walking and talking here. It's good. So this video has become quite long, but I would like to actually keep all the detail in. So what we're gonna do is call it a day for now. Tomorrow we'll get it on the rocks to see just how well it crawls. Throw me a like if this was an interesting video and I will catch you very soon for part two. Thanks for watching.